we're going to talk about the word progress. Or rather the word progressive. Uh, Because there's a lot of... um, There's a lot of controversy over progressive candidates right now. In 2016, Hillary Clinton called herself progressive. uh, And I think she did it as a way to... muck that word up, for lack of a better term, right? I think she did it to, like, devalue the term, uh, because she's not a fucking progressive, right? Like, she takes corporate money. She's in the pockets of the banks. She, uh, gave speeches for hundreds of millions of dollars to fucking Goldman Sachs and shit. Like, you're not progressive. Progressive is, like, standing for the rights of people to help them move forward and create a better future, using the tools that are in place now, like, using the tools that we have now, like, that's progressive. Taking corporate money and speaking on behalf of banks is not fucking progressive. That's a corporatist. And, you know, Elizabeth Warren is touted as a progressive, and I do not believe she is a progressive. There's too much out there about her. She does take corporate PAC money. She says that she's not. She, she says that she's uh, looking to build a campaign around just individual donors. And that's not true. She's been funded by uh, health insurance companies. She's been funded by pharmaceutical companies, and, and banks, all this sort of shit. And she's looking for Hillary Clinton's endorsement. And she just basically said she was going to take dark money if she made it into the generals. Like, this is not what progressives do. Elizabeth Warren is not a a progressive. If you're backed by corporations, you are not progressive. Period. Pro-war, any uh, uh, pro-war candidates are not progressive. If you believe in military intervention, if you believe in governmental coups, if you believe that we have uh, a sovereignty over other countries and we get to dictate their democracy, you're not fucking progressive. You're an authoritarian. Any anti-war candidate is progressive. Any candidate that doesn't believe in uh, these regime change interventionist wars, uh, where we go in and attack a country, invade a country, take their natural resources for our own gain, if you're against that, yeah, you're fucking progressive. Uh, If you're going to say any blue will do, not a progressive. Any blue won't do. Because sometimes uh, the blues are reds. I've addressed that before. So any blue won't do. Right? Basically, what, what, the, what people are saying is... People that champion the any blue will do mentality are basically looking for a way to go back to complacency. Like, they want to go back into feeling good that there is some smooth-talking fucking minority that is in uh, in charge of the country and they don't really have to pay attention to what they do because they're probably going to do the right thing because they're minorities. It's, it's like, yeah, it's not... No. Guess what? The status quo doesn't give a shit about your identity politics. They just doesn't. You know, Obama was a, a, a minority. He was a black guy and he fucking was status quo, which meant that he, he was... Uh, Citibank picked his fucking cabinet. He still let Exxon drill in a bunch of places they didn't fucking need to drill. He still deported a bunch of people. And he still fucked over the American people, increased the surveillance program, drone bombed a shit, of, a shit ton of places, including a fucking wedding. Like, that's status quo. Why would we go to status quo? Status quo fucking sucks. So if you believe in any blue will do, you're just voting for sucking. Sucking is not progressive. Vote shaming is not progressive. Identity politics is not progressive. Identity politics is hypocritical. I find it, I find it hilarious that there are people that will sit there and say, we need a woman. We need a woman in that office. That's what we need. And then I go, oh, cool, great. Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard's a woman. She believes in a lot of progressive ideals. Now, Tulsi Gabbard, blah, 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 CNN smear reference. What are you talking about? We need this woman. That's the only woman? 
Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, these corporatists, these people that have had horrific, horrific ideals and still do. Some of these, some of the ideals that Elizabeth Warren carries are fucking horrific. She's just nice and sounds pleasant on stage. Consumer Protection Bureau is pretty good, though. I will give her that. Kamala Harris is a woman. She fucking sucks. <laughs> like, she's terrible. You know, these identity politics that we play, they don't They don't work. They're, they end up being hypocritical, for one. And it, you should not be voting for somebody based solely on what surface-level attribute that they have. That's bananas. Pete Buttigieg is gay, but he's also fucking terrible for the city of South Bend and hence will probably be terrible for the country of America which is where the city of South Bend is in. Like that dude is can't finish any projects and he fucks everything up. He screwed over the, the black community in South Bend. Now, uh, the article that I did read pointed out that incrementalism is not progressive, and I will partly agree. I think it very much depends on what you're talking about, uh, what issue you're talking about, and uh, and and um, what the end goal is with the issues that we're talking about. Because it because you always have to take the right steps to get to the goal. Um, you can't. You can't skip steps because when you skip steps, then the goalpost gets further away. So in that regard, I think incrementalism is necessary. Um, you know, when you're making big fundamental changes, um, working away from the status quo, you gotta you gotta think of it in steps to get to the end goal. Uh, you know, things like completely restructuring the uh, healthcare programs, uh, completely restructuring the economic system, uh, completely restructuring the educational system. Those are all uh, working away from the nature of the status quo, and, and there are steps to be taken to get to the end result of true progressive uh, policies and ideologies to be put into place, right? That's a, that's a complete change in the way that we live our lives and the way that we operate day to day. Um, and if we just kind of just be like, bah, this is it now, you know, we're doing this economy, uh, people are going to be like, bah, 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 bah. like they're not going to fucking be able to handle it. They'll just kind of lose their mind. So it depends. Um, you know, I think, I think steps need to be taken. To, uh, well, I guess to me that's incrementalism, right? Like, like, the, the end goal is uh, Medicare for all and universal health care for people. Uh, it's just a matter of how do we get there? I believe that that's what we need, but uh, there are uh, different bills in place. Uh, Bernie's bill, Jay Paul's bill, Tulsi Gabbard has a, a slightly different plan where the end result is still Medicare for all and universal health care. It's just a matter of how do we get there. Um, and you can disagree with these ideas, and, and uh, some people have. I, I have my interpretation of what Tulsi Gabbard wants to do that I can probably talk about in a later video after giving it a little bit more thought uh, and having a little bit more um, more oomph behind it. Uh, but, I, but, I, but I believe I've, I have addressed it in the past before. But let's just have a discussion about it. But let's talk about the steps that we need to take to get there. I think that's incrementalism. Uh, what's not incrementalism is like... Hey, you know, we put one of those guys in prison. Incrementalism. That's not incrementalism. That's you fucking trying to curry favor, but still, uh, you know, patting the fucking pharmaceutical industry on the ass. Not one banker has gone to prison. We're, and we're looking at another fucking crash coming in 2020. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase, Goldman Sachs, all these fucking big city group. Um, these big banks have said that that's when it's coming. There's another crash coming in 2020. They've come out and called out for it. Uh, why aren't you punishing them for taking advantage of the system? Why aren't you punishing them for 
Hey, we at least know incre- that's not incrementalism. I will say Consumer Protection Bureau. Cool, great. That's a step forward, right? And the end goal of regulating the banks. Uh, I'm, that's not too bad. That's a, that To me, it's just the steps that you take to get to the end result um, and knowing what those steps are. That's That to me is incrementalism. Maybe that's not what incrementalism... Uh, the word has been co-opted by, uh, by, by you know, neoliberals and, and transformed into something different. It's all about trial and error, right? We need, we need new experiments in this thing called democracy, and we need new experiments of economies to to help people. Uh, maybe it's a blend of two different philosophies that need to come into play and keeping an eye on the uh, weak points of both and making sure that we don't teeter into one side or the other and try to achieve some kind of economic balance. That's an experiment we can try. That's progressive. What it really boils down to is progressives are about bold problem-solving ideas. That's the key. It's about problem-solving. And part of that comes from recognizing the problem. You need to be able to recognize what the problem is, accept what that problem is, and then, and then, you know, figure out a solution and a way to uh, have redemption involved as well. Uh, but you can't get to those things without acknowledgement and recognizing what the problem is. The, you know, if we're if, if we're not going to do that, then and and look, redemption, forgiveness, uh, apolog- legitimate, true apologies. Um, are all part of being progressive. Understanding the humanity of everybody is, is part of being progressive. Um, most Democrats are not fucking progressive. Period. Most of the people that are on that Democratic stage are not progressive. You know? And I'm sorry. I, I, I see a bunch of people out there that I literally saw somebody go, you know, I'd really like to see a Buttigieg Harris ticket. And it's just like, why? So you can fuck black people over doubly in this country? So you can you can prop up the prison industrial complex so South Bend, Indiana can become another fucking prison town? That's why you want a fucking Buttigieg Harris ticket? You know, I'd really like to see a Warren Harris ticket. Fucking why? These people aren't progressive. These people are, don't champion for you. I'm still holding out hope for Biden. I see all of this shit, it's, and, it, and it's wild. It's wild. And all of the people that end up saying this claim that they're progressives. They claim that they are progressive people. You're not. You can't be progressive while backing a corporatist. There, To me, there are three progressive candidates that are on that stage. Three. Uh, Bernie Sanders, Tulsi Gabbard, Andrew Yang. All of them, based on these definitions of progressive, uh, have met those definitions of progressive. All of them have. All three of them. And there's a lot of critiques of them, too. And I, and I totally understand the critiques. Uh, a lot of the critiques come from uh, the smear campaigns put out by corporate media, put out by uh, misunderstanding... Um, what the nuances of what some of these people are saying are. And look, I am critical. I'm skeptical of these people too, you know? Like, uh, I'm, I'm skeptical of... I'm a big Tulsi Gabbard supporter. I, that should not come to a surprise of anybody that watches any of my content on a regular basis. Uh, but I also like Bernie. I'm also a Bernie supporter. I'm also a Yang supporter. You can be a multi-tiered supporter. I'm a supporter of any fucking progressive candidate on that fucking stage. All three of those voices are necessary. So when people come out and they start arguing with me, well, Tulsi's got this problem. Yeah, it's a smear campaign. Here's how. Great. Let's have the conversation, right? Like, let's not just yell at each other about it. I'm, I'm definitely down to have the conversation. And having that conversation, having that discourse, that's progressive. And I think a lot of people have forgotten that, have forgotten to uh, the that discourse, the notion of discourse is progressive. 
We need to understand all these different kinds of voices. We need to have a diversity of thought. We need to... We can't have the homogenized ideas be put forward. We need to know the ins and outs of things. We need to learn why people are scared of certain things, why certain issues are important to other people but not important to the, to the rest. And what we can do to help each other. Those are progress. Hey, thanks for watching this video. Uh, this is part of a little series I do called Road Reflections where I talk to you while I'm on tour uh, about the current socio-political environment, current news stories, uh, debates, that sort of stuff that I don't get to talk about on my podcast, Taboo Table Talk or Forkful of Noodles. It's a little bit looser. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this clip. If you guys enjoyed it, uh, you can find the full episodes on my Facebook page. Uh, you can go like Krish Mohan, uh, social vigilante and comedian. And uh, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button. Uh, share this out if you enjoyed it. Um, and another way to help uh, see more regular content is by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash Thanks again, guys, and we'll see you on the road.